off season and move back on. You were on Buffalo, so I pulled back in Buffalo. I guess what was you know the reason behind you going off field in 2021 and then coming back on here in 2022? Yeah, you know, Coach Leipold came here, and obviously he, he there was other guys here, and I, I just came in to do my part and play my role, essentially. So I was an analyst off the field. I did that role prior to when I was in Buffalo, and that's the same thing I had to do here. So I was a special teams analyst, and I helped out with the coordinator and just game planning and still helped out defensively. Was the plan for you always to get back on here in Kansas? Yeah, I, my plan was just, for me personally, I don't know what the plan was. My plan was just to come here and, and do what I was supposed to do, what I was, what my job was. And my job was to be an analyst, uh, help out on special teams, and help any of the coaches that were here prior transition defensively and, and learn the defense. Kind of like your own little red shirt year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you have the, the special teams breakdown now, um, I get the impression from, from talking to everybody else that there's split responsibilities. It's not solely you who's guiding everything. How do you guys break that down by teams? Who's leading which coverage units? Who's leading what? How yeah, does that go? Good question. So I, overall, I coordinate everything, and but I do the kickoff coverage. Coach Simpson works with the punt. Coach Peterson's punt return, and Coach Wallace works kick return. And we all work hand in hand. And I think Coach Leipold's philosophy is have all coaches involved as much as possible. And we've all coordinated at one point all those coaches I've mentioned. So it's a team effort. I kind of organize it and put it, to, put it together. And Luke, he's our special teams analyst. He helps out with that. But that's basically how we do it. And every coach has their hand in on it. So we all help game plan. And it's a full team effort instead of just one guy trying to do it all. Because it ends up being six special teams with one guy. And so when we break it up into pieces like that, it helps, certainly. And you would have done, at Buffalo, you were still in charge of everything as opposed to this collaborative effort, right? Right, and I, I did two. I would do kick, kick. I've done punt return. I've done them all, but yeah. I would do two in Buffalo, and then we, we did two others there as well. So how much now do you see this? I know it's obviously really early in this whole thing, but how do you see this coming together so far? Say that again. I, I know it's just early because it's only April 7th, but how do you see this now, this this strategy coming together? I, I, it's good. You know, it's you're, you're learning from other coaches as well. You know, I've never worked with Coach Wallace or Coach Peterson before, and things they've learned from their past where they've been, it, it helps you kind of, you, you're a sponge, you're soaking that up, and you're implementing your ideas as well. So I think it's a good fit. We all we all understand each other and what we're trying to do and what the common goal is. So it's been, it's been pretty easy. In terms of the personnel to build out the special team side, how do you want to use that? Is that where you want younger players there, starters? Like, what type of personnel are you looking for? I think you always want your best players on, on the field. You know, special teams is a third of the game. And then sometimes, you know, it's people think it's just a role for backups. But we'd like guys, if, if you're a starter on defense, we're not going to start you on four special teams units, right? But we'd like you to start on one or two. And I think you kind of build f from that. And you always want the young guys, guys that are redshirted, they're hungry, they haven't played in a year because they haven't played since high school. You want to get those guys on the field and, and have that's how they gain their confidence and build and, and build momentum for when they do get on the field. But it, it's we want our best players out there. We, we need our best players. We're talking about splitting up roles, but you've also split up the line responsibilities yeah. too. How much have you noticed um, being able to dig in specifically with just the ends and, and working with pass rush and working with that benefit? Yeah, and I guess defensive ends is it's a specialized position in the sense of it's a lot different from the defensive tackles. There are things mm -hmm. obviously you share in common, some of the drill work and things like that, but playing on the perimeter, uh, sometimes the ends will drop, they'll be in coverage, they, they make checks, things like that. So. Certainly it's different, and so breaking that up and getting to specify what you want to do and splitting up the room, it's a pretty big room. I, I think that helps, and sometimes we'll work together as well. You know, when we're running stunts and games and things like that, we'll get together, we'll meet, we'll work one on, and then we'll split up and do what we need to do from there. But it helps because it's a big group, and you can really specialize in the position you're coaching. And correct me if I'm wrong, but Lance, when you split him up to Buffalo too, you were also in that role. Correct. So. Because he's mentioned he thought things really started to turn around there in terms of productivity in the line when he when he divided responsibilities. Right. What did you see at that time? Yeah, it, it was the same thing. And it's, you know, instead of you're in a room and you, you have 20-something guys in there, now you have eight. And you can really say, hey, well, this drill work specifically is for this, this day. And that and that's that helps. It really helps. Great. It's two different positions. Some of them are similar things that you do. But, but really, you're working more in space with the defensive ends and working different pass rush and techniques like that. With the defensive ends, mm -hmm. obviously there's two, but 
do you look for the same role for each? Can you walk us through kind of what you look for each spot there? Yeah, we have two positions. We have a rush and we have a stud. Our stud aligns the field. So those are usually our, our bigger body guys, guys like Malcolm Wing, Jeremy Robinson, and our rushes are more of our boundary guys, okay? So those are smaller, maybe a little bit more athletic. Kyron Johnson played that for us last year. And, and so we're at, I wouldn't say they're similar. They're interchangeable positions. Uh, you've got to learn both. both. Every guy has to learn both because they're almost the same thing, but just size-wise, that's kind of how we do it. And for Long, I guess, where does he fit into that? He's playing both, but right now he would be a rush. And what does Jeff see about him getting along with him? Obviously, a transfer portal guy, but getting to see him. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's everything we saw on tape. He's athletic. He's got a lot of twitch. He can change direction, and he, he's, a, he's a playmaker. He's a guy that can make plays, and he doesn't need, need a lot of room to do that. So excited about him. Has anything surprised you about him so far? I would say, you know, he's not the biggest guy, but he's really power. He's he's very powerful, very strong kid. So I knew he was explosive on film, and you see some of his pass rush ability. But when you practice with him and watch him, what he does in the run game, he's a really physical guy, pretty strong guy. It's really early, but um, where are you at with your specialists right now? Specialists? Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we have young guys. We Every guy has probably about three or four years left. You know, we, we played him young. I think Borch, he's doing a great job kicking. He's, he's solid. He's put on uh, eight to ten pounds of muscle, so he's really bought in there. Uh, Reese, he's doing a good job, too. Th those guys have been solid. We've been indoors most of, most of spring ball, so they're not really letting it fly. The punters, not, punters aren't really letting it fly in the indoor, but they're all doing their job, and I expect big things from them. We need them to be good this year, really good. I know this kind of sounds silly, but I was thinking about that because we haven't seen them really punt and do any of that. For, does that does that matter to them at all? I mean, do they need that time well, at this point in the year? Yeah, sometimes you need a little time okay. off after the year, but uh, they're always even if we're inside, they're working outside, okay. and so they're always getting their work in. They'll they'll do camps and things like that in the summer as well. So they're always getting good work in. Mm -hmm. So and that doesn't concern me. It's us putting it all together when we go full team group and letting the protection work with the punt team or the protection with the field goal team work all hand in hand. Punt returners, kick returners too. Where are you at? Yeah, uh, obviously you guys all know Kenny Logan. He's he's fantastic. He has good timing. You know, he, he sees it. He has good anticipation. So he's in, he, he, he's a really good returner for us. Punt return is open right now. You know, Kwame graduated and we've got about three, four guys in there that are rotating in. Uh, Trevor Wilson's doing a good job. Kyra Pearson. Luke Grimm, we've got guys, Savion Morrison and Devin Neal, he does some kick returns. So we've got a lot of bodies right there right now. They're all getting work, and we'll see after fall camp how it transitions, where it goes from there. In terms of the other guys that you have for the defensive ends, mm -hmm. um, I guess who stood out to you during spring practice? Sorry? The younger guys that you have at the defensive end, mm -hmm. anyone kind of stood out to you so far? Yeah, you know, honestly, all the guys – have been really coachable. They've all been good. You know, Damar and Alexander, he, he's, he's a big kid. He's a young kid, but he's a big kid. He's doing a good job. Cole Pe Petras is a young guy. He's doing a really, really good job. They, they all standing out. They all have work to do because they're young guys. You know, they all, are, they're all trying to get on the field and you just got to, for us, it's just being sound and buying into the defense and understanding the concepts we're trying to uh, implement and, and doing that. So they've all been pretty solid. What are you hearing from feedback from Kyron so far? in his NFL journey? You well, know, I haven't heard a lot. Okay. Kyron was up here from for, for Pro Day, and I, he's been excited. I, I think I, he was with Minnesota a couple days ago. He was there working out for them. He's pretty excited for the draft. Obviously, he tested out well. He did some good things, so we're excited to see. You know, a guy like him, that's what I tell the guys. He's he's a six-foot, six-foot-one guy. I think he hid it at two. 35, not the biggest guy, but explosive. And biggest thing, he was a motor. And everything we talk about on the defensive line is it's playing fast, playing physical, and playing with a motor. And that's something he did, and that's why he's in the position he's in. Time for one more. Lance talks a lot about alignment. Mm -hmm. I guess when you were with Matt Buffalo, what, is, what does that mean to you when he says that? And where do you actually maybe see it here at Kansas right now? Yeah, alignment is huge for him. I'm, I'm 39 years old, and I've known Coach since I was 18. So I've known him, what's that, 21 years. And everything is about alignment and having, whether it's it's between staff, it's players, everyone's all aligned in the same. We all have the same goal. We all have the same cultural blueprints. Uh, we're disciplined in that craft, and we try to implement that within our players, the type of players we recruit and the type of players in our program. All right. Thank
Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Thanks, Hal.